Um, this video will give us some practice with uh, a little bit bigger program, breaking the program up into subroutines and using functions. And Also, I'm going to discuss the use of constants in a program. Uh, before I take a look at some programming, let's take a look at what the actual exercise is. Basically, what you're to do is to write a program to generate random sentences. and You make these sentences from picking random words from a word list. And we have four word lists, article, noun, verb, and preposition. And each sentence should be created by concatenating a random word from the article list and the noun list, and then a verb, and then a preposition, then another article, and then another noun. And uh, these words just selected at random. And what you should do is you should start the program by asking the user how many sentences to generate and then place the sentences on sheet 2. Each sentence in a cell starting on row 1 and just going on down row 2 and so on. So let's just take a little look here at a, kind of a basic outline of how you would start this program. Now this outline is just to help you get started with it. If you want to try a different approach or you have some other ideas, uh, feel free to go for it. The uh, basic outline of the main, of course, would simply be, you know, get the sentence count from the user, and then you're going to loop around that many times. Now, if you already know how many times you're going to loop around, um, I bet you can guess what kind of loop to use, because a do-while loop or a do-until loop is used when you're not sure how many times to go around. So you're going to need a loop uh, to go around that many times. And then for every time you go around the loop, you simply call your sentence subroutine. And you're going to pass to the sentence subroutine the output row number so that that sentence subroutine can output the sentence it creates into the correct row of sheet 2. So let's take a look at the sentence subroutine. The sentence subroutine basically is going to use the word functions and it's going to concatenate all the words together into a single sentence. Of course, remember you got to get a space in there between your words. And if you wanted to, you could put a period on the end. And I suppose you could also try to capitalize the first word of the sentence and not capitalize the rest. Uh, that's an interesting add-on. Anyway, so you'd use the article function to get an article, then you use the noun function to get a noun, and you just do it in the order I mentioned above. Um, and so you just get all those words, concatenating them all together, and then store the sentence onto sheet 2 into the correct output row that you passed in to the parameter list of your subroutine for sentences. Now the code uh, to, to write a function to, to get the words from these various lists, they're pretty simple. You're going to use find last row on the correct column, of course, to find out how many words are in that list. And then you'll just generate a random number from one, or actually it would be from two to the number of rows because we have headings at the top of every one of our columns. So you can think about that one. And then you just return that word from the function using the mechanism that I showed you in the prior videos. Or you can look in your book in the chapter about functions. I think that's chapter 10. It's it's very similar to the chapter on subroutines. So again, here's just an example of, a, of the noun function. It's going to return a string um, and so on. So you're going to have your different functions for the different words. Okay, so that's what the program's all about. Let's go take a look at a little bit of code to help you think a little bit more about functions and also the idea of constants. For starters, it's very common for people to put numbers in their programs that represent things like column 1, column 2, column 3, and so on. And it's very common for people just to put the number right into their program. And when you read that program, you see these numbers, and they are essentially pretty meaningless. And so it's accepted and standard practice in the programming industry to declare what are called constants. And essentially what these are is they, they look kind of like variables, but you'll notice in this example here on the screen that these constants are defined as all being uppercase letters. And we do, when we do them in all uppercase to distinguish them from variables. Because once you assign the value to a constant, as you can see here in this example, you cannot change it. It's a one-time deal. And then you can use those constants in your program, and instead of just having a number, for instance, here's let's just take a look at this one, the verb column. We've initialized that to three. Well, you can imagine that the user might use the 
number three in their program and somebody comes along and sees that number three and they're like, well, what's that three stand for? Well, if you give it a nice name like we've done here, the verb column, then a person doesn't even have to think twice about what that three stands for. They just see the word verb column instead of the three. So you should almost never have a number in your program. You should define these constants. And you'll also notice that these constants are defined outside of any subroutine or outside of any function. That means that these constants can be used throughout this code module because they're not buried inside of any function. If it was buried inside of a function or inside of a sub, then they could only be used within that function or sub. So let's take a look at an example of how we might use this. So here's our main driver and the message box is just going to print out the number of nouns. And so we have a function called count nouns. And notice the use of the function here. You give the name of the function and then you have the parentheses. Now in this case you'll notice there are no arguments inside the parentheses because we don't need to pass anything to count nouns. So let's take a look at count nouns. And count nouns basically has the function heading with the name. And again, the parameter list is empty. There are no parameters. And the data type we're going to return is a long. And here is the single statement in count nouns. The very first thing we do is we call find last row. But instead of passing in a number such as two, we pass in this constant called noun column. So if we say find last row on the noun column, that's very easy to read and understand what's going on there. You'll also notice that for the heading rows, I put a 1 up the top in my constants. And so I need to subtract the heading rows to find out how many total nouns I have. You can imagine that someone might come in and add another heading row and maybe some just explanatory text at the top. And then all we'd have to do is change heading row up here in our program to 2. And any place in the program where it uses heading rows, it would be instantly updated because we just changed it in this one place. Or if we decided to move the noun column to a different place, all we have to do, of course, is change it up here in our constant list and our program would be instantly updated. We don't have to go around and look for all the uses of that too. So it makes it very easy for us to update our program. So basically we call find last row, subtract the number of heading rows, and then again you assign to the name of the function. So count nouns is the name of the function. We have an assignment to the name of the function. Find last row again. You've seen that plenty of times before, but again you might want to just take a look at that. This is a classic example of a function. You know, It's got the function name, then it's got a parameter list with a single parameter. In this case, it's column, and it returns a long. And find last row is equal to, and then there's mumbo jumbo. And so again, there's the assignment to the name of the function. So go ahead and see what you can do with this sentence maker program. And if you have some questions or you need a little additional help, remember, feel free to ask. Thank you.